Hello and welcome to TTT. Everybody and welcome back to the Halloween Spooktacular 2018. Simon. Hello! Uh, it's time for me and you to come together oh. as a little anniversary podcasty thing and and have a little look back, maybe, but also a look forward. A look forward. So But mostly a look back. <laughs> Well, I mean, when it comes to podcasting, originally it was literally me recording you without your knowledge necessarily. What? Do you remember the earliest podcast? A lot of the stuff that went to podcast was never really like considered to be a recording, right? No. It wasn't like a we didn't sit down to record it. We, we were just having sort of chats um, in guild chat kind of in the evenings. And that's the stuff that ended up making it into the podcast a lot. Because I could record like Ventrilo without your permission. Oh my God. Um, do you remember this? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you really ever listened to any of the podcasts back, but... You, maybe you, you should and just check, oh, my God, I didn't realise they recorded that. Oh, God. Now I'm terrified. So, no, what do you remember about the earliest days of the Yog Pod? This is like, so this, is, this podcast is going to be me and Simon. We're going to look at some creepy stories because we like doing that. Yeah. And also we're going to call it the Halloween Spectacular or whatever because it's July. Yeah. And then whatever the number is, uh, which I'm not sure what we're up to. It doesn't really matter what Let's call the it number 10. up to. Let's call it the 10th. The te- yeah, 10. That 10. makes sense. Spack ten killer. Oh, there we go. I mean, that's perfect. That does. That's absolutely spot on. So, do you want to talk about what do you want to talk about? You can talk about anything you want, uh, or we could just dive straight into a creepy pasta uh, that you found <laughs> for us. Yeah, I mean, I've, there's there's a number of ones that I found. I found uh, three stories, and then a, a site that has a bunch of like really short ones. Yes, some of these I've had a very quick browse, and some of them are fucking awful i mean all i know is the length of them and the title and um that's that's it really yes do you do you want to do you want to start let's just dive straight into the idea of this which is just a it's one of us to read a fucking creepy pasta and then we'll just discuss it because it's just madness okay the first one you sent me was called Babyface. it's from two years ago and it has 10 upvotes so for some reason this one resonated with you, even though it's not, doesn't seem to be very famous. No, but it's called Babyface, which is really creepy. <laughs> like, if you imagine, like, a full-grown person with the face of a baby. Right. That is, like, absolutely terrifying. Kind of, right. Um, yeah, like like Cabbage Patch Kids terrifying, kind of like that. Well, I was thinking more, you can get, like, uh, those really convincing masks. Like, there's a mask of, like... It looks like a crying baby and like a full grown person, like like a naked man could be wearing it. And oh, what, just like, that mental image. Like the payday mask. Yeah, yeah. sure. Why yeah. not? Or like uh, the boss baby, just like a boss baby mask. Well, I mean, that's I more backwards? cartoony. That's not, I mean, I want it ultra realistic that it looks so much like a baby. Do you want me to start reading this? No, I can, I can, I can read you it. You want to do this want. one? Okay, yeah, yeah, you yeah. read this. I mean, I'm I a will, little bit worried. I'll, I'll jump in and stop you okay. at certain points. I mean, this is, uh, the fact that I'm going into this blind is not good. It's only got eight upvotes to me. Did you downvote it? <laughs> no. <laughs> baby face. Right. Silently, she lays flaccid on her bed. The threaded cotton blanket comforting her body from the dense air surrounding her dark bedroom. Okay, I need to stop you already. What's wrong? Well, first of all... Is it flaccid on the <laughs> bed? Is that what... I, flaccid on her bed. Yeah, is, yeah. Is like she kind of limps, you know? It's, it's a sad expression. She's not tumescent on her bed. Yes. And then the, the, the dense air surrounding her dark yeah, bedroom. It's cu- it's humid. It's very humid. But it doesn't make quite any quite quite enough sense this sentence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Comforting her body from the dense air surrounding her dark bedroom. So maybe it, she's her, on a different planet. Maybe the, she's on like Neptune and I like see. the atmosphere is really dense. But the de- the, a- the air is outside her bedroom. No, it's well, not. Well, it says surrounding her bedroom. Surrounding her in her dark bedroom? 
Okay, that's fine. I can deal with that. Okay. Let's carry on. I mean, there's quite a long... There's, I know. There's, there's quite a bit more to go. I feel like I just... I've already criticised okay. a lot of things. All right, just jump in whenever you want to, though. All right? She has woken up yet again to the disappointment of another nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so again... <laughs> It's like my bedroom at home. <laughs> a disappointment in a bedroom. Yeah. yeah uh, fucking hell. And sighs, trying to tell herself that it's all okay now, but her brain won't stop telling her that something is still in error. <laughs> something is still in error. Yeah. In error. <laughs> is she a robot? I mean, you say something is wrong. That's not how you would normally word it. Something is wrong. That's, something that's is how, in error. That's, that's how I, I say things. Yeah. If, if I've got, like, the wrong... Trousers on. Yeah, I'll yeah. Say, I'll stop and look down and say something is in error. Or you'd say you know something just isn't right. Yeah. You wouldn't say something is in error. Yeah, you'd but... like it's like if you forget your keys or something, you pat your pockets and you're like, oh, mm. you know something's not something's in error. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> this is the we're in the, the first paragraph. <laughs> Carry we, on. We finished the first paragraph. Well, don't worry, it's not okay. too long. Looking around her room, barely able to see a meter in front of her as the darkness dwells throughout. Right. Her eyes wander over to her left. Where the ensuite bathroom resides. Do her, are her, her eyes popped out there? And have they got a mind, an, uh, mind of They've their own? They've wandered off, yeah. She's still lying in bed. Her eyes have popped out of her skull and have started walking towards the ensuite. And the ensuite bathroom mm. resides. Yeah, it's where it resides. Good. Carry on. <laughs> a small glimmer of moonlight seeps through her frosted window with the shadow of the large leafy tree Crawling across it in black lines. Was this um, written by Stephanie Meyer? Did she write this? I mean, there's a lot. Did she write this creepy pasta? There's a lot of like unnecessary descriptive words, adjectives, just thrown, just sprinkled liberally throughout. (laughs) Generously, yeah. A a lovely seasoning of shit. Carry on. The shadows used to terrify her. The branched out leaves looking almost like long, slender fingers reaching for the safety of the inside. But now, as they sway in the soft breeze, she finds comfort from the sways, waving back and forth and a happy like motion. Right. I mean, I, I'm confused by all of this, but. That second paragraph, we're doing well. We're racing through this one. Her heart continues to race, even though she has already convinced herself the nightmare is over and she tries to reach the top of the blanket laying across her chest. Now, this is where it takes a turn, all right? Okay. So hold on to your fucking horses, all right? But her arms don't move. (laughs) It's as if if everything and nothing was... It's as if... It's as if everything and nothing was weighing down on her entire body, and her movement is futile. Oh, no. Or futile. If you're American. With her or with all her strength, she tries to pull her body into any movement. A cringe of her toes. A cringe of her yeah. toes. That's right, a cringe of her toes. It's almost poetic. It is actually. I mean, I would like the, I like the idea that the new um song of Ice and Fire is called A Cringe of Toes. <laughs> <laughs> Something is in error. That would be the first sentence. A cringe of toes. By George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Something was in error. <laughs> uh, the character laid flaccid on the bed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Game of Thrones. Okay, a cringe of her toes, a blink of her eyelids, or a wiggle of her small fingers. But nothing. Okay. Tears swell heavy in her puffy eyes as she realises she's paralysed, staring to her left in a dull light. In a doll-like stature, that, oh, okay. the movement in the corner of her vision attracts her out of her looping thoughts. Since she focuses... I think that's supposed to be and. I see why you've picked this one. And <laughs> she focuses on the right bottom side of the doorframe where she had seen the sudden movement. Perhaps it was just my mind playing tricks on me, she justified, <laughs> still trying to find some way to move. If only she could move just enough to push her arm to her sleeping partner next to her. So she's sleeping with someone. She's not alone. In hopes of waking him up or even speak and cry out for help. Right. Or even speak and cry out for help. So this is this is the classic sleep paralysis fear, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, this is never good. 
Yeah. So, I mean, is this a nightmare? Is this real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. <laughs> Something is in their raw. I guess we're going to see a baby face. It f- okay, carry on. She feels like hours she is laying there, paralytic and crying, but it had only been minutes. Paralytic. I, I normally associate that word with drinking too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rather than... Oh, mate, I got fucking paralytic last <laughs> night. <laughs> I was lying in my bed, right, and I couldn't move. And it was right there I, with shadows. I knew that something was in there all. <laughs> oh, but I couldn't fucking tell you what it was, oh, I tried cringing me toes, but I just couldn't. <laughs> oh, you ever been like that? Oh, man. Oh, Whoa. God. Fucking what? Okay. The shadow is back. Only this time it's not quickly shifting away when she focuses her eyes to it. It's small, but big enough for her to see its entire outline of the brim of the door's wooden frame. (laughs) (laughs) One. Hang on, let me just... just, (laughs) It's small, but big enough for her to see... Its entire outline of the brim of the door's wooden frame. Right. I'm no what none the wiser okay. about how big that is. I mean, maybe this will, you know. I think that should be a unit of measurement that everyone uses. The brim of the door's wooden frame. Not small, but big enough for her to see mm. its entire outline of the brim of the door's. Sorry, wooden frame. yeah, yeah, yeah. There. I mean, that's so, a very complicated and lot. Maybe we need like an acronym. No, but if or you're something. going to like an like IKEA yeah. and you want to buy like a wardrobe, I'm looking for something small but big enough for me to see its entire outline of the brim of the door's wooden frame. <laughs> And they'll be like, oh, yeah, sure, we got... Oh, yeah, you want the David. <laughs> What's it called, David? <laughs> oh, in uh, in Swedish, it means uh, brave. <laughs> okay, sure. I'll have a David um, wardrobe, please. Or you could have a spunk. <laughs> Sorry? Did you just say spunk? <laughs> no, a spunk. It means courageous in Swedish. Yeah. One, two, three... Four black fingers pressed tightly to the edge, (laughs) holding on like gravity was not working for this being. The thumb comes quickly after, soothing the wood up and down as if it was taunting her for what was to come. She watches the small bony fingers as they press firmly to the wood and then running them up and down, rubbing the wood then holding the wood again. <laughs> What's going on? There's a lot of rubbing of wood in this story. <laughs> flaccid, like someone lying flaccid on the bed and now they're trying to rub the wood. Yeah. Also, that, what was that counting? Like, that was so kind of... It was the fingers appearing. Oh, I see. And, like, see. curling around. But it felt like it was kind of like, it was like some Sesame Street. You thought it was the count. Yeah. One, ah. Ah, ah, two, ah, 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 three, ah, 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 four, ah, 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 black fingers pressed tightly to the edge, (laughs) holding on like gravity was not working for this being. (laughs) Is strange. Is that a David you've got there? Or is that a spunk? (laughs) Oh, I think you've got the size. It's small, but big enough for you to see the entire outline of the brim of the door's wooden frame. Fucking hell. Oh. oh, you've got it soothed. The wood's very well soothed. All right, go Why on. Why is he rubbing? Okay, so he's rubbing the wood. A second set of fingers are now pressed to the frame. Oh, Just above the first set, this being was getting stronger, getting closer. With one quick movement, the hands pressed tighter than ever before, and a shape starts to appear beyond the fingers. A head... This dark, silent creature begins to unfurl its head slowly, revealing its face. So its its head was like furled up. Yeah, like the, um, like a towel. Like a like one of those. Oh, like a, um, what are those like a fruit roll up. Like a fruit <laughs> yeah. roll up. Yeah. What, you mean like those sweets that? Yeah, you unfurl. But, right. Yeah. So like kind of like a party popper. No, like um, a party favor. A party. Party tutor, was yeah. it called? They are party favors, I are they? Called, which is a bit of a weird little sort of little party and, tutors. Yeah, a tutti puta. Oh god, people! Yeah. Oh, I can't see those things. I watched some um, ASMR of people doing doing those, and I was like, what? oh Jesus, I can't. 
can't see them in the same light. How anymore. is that ASMR? Oh, well, I think people like to hear like the crink, the crackly crinkling sound of the. Oh, God. And then that. Imagine that's what sound the uh, this creature makes as it appears. I feel like someone's watched a horror movie here, and then what they, yeah. you know, you could tell the creature's getting closer because it's like it's pulling itself into our dimension through the door. Yeah. Frame, you know. And I think her looking at it is making it more real. Yeah. Well. We're actually helping this now. We're making this better. It's like a it's like a tulpa. Just like discussing it makes it stronger and brings it more into our reality. Is that, a t- is that it's called a tulpa? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like a... Is it like Bloody Mary? It's like a being that you can sort of like will into existence. I see. Yeah. Because, yeah, by giving it credence. There's a term for everything. Okay. Uh, especially when it comes to, you know... People on the internet making things up. Right. Yes. It's, it's probably has its own little um, as Wikipedia TV probably. tropes page. Yeah. Oh god, definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay. Okay. Where the fuck was I? Okay. She can barely see its face, but its black hair shimmers from the moonlight, raggedy and unkempt. She's scared, but she tries hard to focus. Right. The face is not as she expected. Ooh. Its pale face with puffy cheeks and small grey lips are nothing compared... Nothing compared... (laughs) To you. To the massive black planets that were its eyes. There were no eyelids, lashes or eyebrows, and its slender nose looked only a small shadow vertically down its rounded face. Right. They stared at each other as if waiting on each other to make the next move. Right. Time passes. <laughs> what? Time passes. She begins to feel tired. Are they exhaust- having this staring contest? Yeah, pretty much. Time passes. I mean, how long? <laughs> months? Well, it feels like months, but it's actually just seconds. But there's like, imagine there's like um, like a montage, you know, of them like playing chess, like watching TV. Like, well, she know. can't move, oh. but maybe she can say, you know, rook to queen's pawn six. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. The David defence. Not to be confused with the spunk defence. <laughs> no, that's something very different. Yeah. Yeah. Time passes. She begins to feel tired and exhausted and slowly loses focus on the creature, whisking away into a dream. Okay. <laughs> That's when it made the noise. Okay. The first noise she had even heard since waking, and it shattered her inner being. Holy shit. Its slit like <laughs> mouth opened, screeching and <laughs> and crackling. An unearthly sound that can only be explained by a drowning animal being possessed. Oh my god. No breaths, no change of pitch, just constant noise. (laughs) Her breathing grew strong and heavy, pushing what energy she had left from her body, and a shiver rushed throughout her entire A body, (laughs) giving her the sense of feeling back. I mean... Oh, the sense of feeling back. Okay, right, yeah. So... It's he- this, this is heavy. This is heavy going. Okay. I'm into it. It might be too late, though. As the creature builds up the stamina to move forward, it shifts its small, smooth black body towards her in fast-paced crackles of its bones pushing forward. <laughs> the fight between her body trying to shift itself over to her partner and the creature pushing towards her is intense. And she rips her body from its position hitting itself against her partner and screaming in fear just as the creature reaches the bed. <laughs> it does say bed, which is which kind of adds to it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should start using more kind of like bed. I think we should use more words that like kind of are fear fiery words, right? Like like c- c- crackles. You know, bones. Do you know what I mean? We should we should actually add extra letters. To, to like... Oh, for fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. So, so her partner, he wakes and sits up, holding her shivering body and soothes her cries. She looks over to her left, and the creature is gone. What is it? Was it a nightmare? He whispers, pushing her hair back from her sweating face. There. There was something, there was a thing in the bathroom coming for me. Its eyes, they were so dark and large, she whimpers. 
his body goes stiff. <laughs> finally. Oh, we've had enough flaccid bodies. <laughs> we finally got a stiff one. Those fingers of, and the bones have finally, you know, oh, done their work. His, his body goes stiff and she leans up to see his expressionless face staring into the distance. Baby face. He mouthed, closing his eyes in disappointment. What? She looked forward and froze in horror as a thick black cloud grew closer to them, engulfing the entire room. When the smoky cloud... Is someone vaping in there? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, when the smoky cloud had reached them, she could just make out a figure at the end of the bed. Baby face had climbed up onto the base and perched its sleek black claw-like feet onto the edge. There's so many descriptions for this thing. It's been described as like, now it's like some sort of bird, like perching, do you know what I mean? Like before it was like a sort of a weird ball. I was kind of picturing something like a, a sloth. You know, it was like gripping onto like the, the frame oh, of the I door. I see, and it had that friendly face that came round the corner. It's like its head slowly turned and it had like a dopey look. <sighs> <laughs> On its face. That would be pretty spooky. Yeah. I could see that being spooky. The familiar feeling of weight pushed through her body once again, and she was stuck in place, only able to stare as baby face drops onto the end of the bed and begins to crawl towards them. Right. You can't take her to! You can't take her to! He whispered, just as paralysed as she. <gasps> baby face shifts his heavy body onto her feet, then continues onto her legs, pushing forward with its sharp, clawed feet, digging in with every movement. It reaches to her chest and perches itself, pressing its claws into her ribs and staring into her eyes with its pure darkness that goes on forever. That's when she feels it. One, two, three, four fingers reaching through her chest for her beating heart. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the end. <laughs> so, oh my god! Right. So, okay. Yeah. First of all, not a lot of uh, baby face. Well, I thought I thought she was gonna be the baby face, right? You know I mean, all the descriptions to begin with made me think that she was actually like a doll or something. I mean, she was like paralyzed. She had these glassy eyes that were like staring oh. in one and couldn't move because she was actually like trapped inside a, a baby doll so or something. So the plot twist is the woman sleeping was a baby doll. That's what I was thinking, yeah. But then who, what was the monster? Well, the monster didn't seem like a baby face. I mean, it had like these planet-sized black eyes. Yeah, like, like babies have. <laughs> and thin grey <laughs> lips, like a baby like has. Like babies have, of and course. A, and a slender black nose, like a baby has. Yeah, and no eyelids, or eyelashes, or eyebrows. I think you just mentioned, like... Does, does a baby not have those? It has puffy not. cheeks, right? And that's it. That's the only thing that makes it look like a baby. Puffy cheeks. Right. Uh, but it doesn't it perch? Doesn't it, like, hook... It perches like a baby. It doesn't like crawl or anything. Let's we'll just crawl up her, I guess. I suppose. But the thing is, like she said, she rips her body from its position, hitting itself against her partner. I mean, what? Let's just analyze that little bit of a sentence there. She rips her body from its position, yeah. hitting itself against her partner. Oh, and it's a little bit confusing there, isn't it? I mean, that's why I thought like she was a baby, like like a doll, and she'd finally like move oh. and he'd just wake up and be like oh just he was like a creepo you know like a super super just dodgy he collects like little dolls yeah 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 women. yeah and maybe oh. he just picks her up and puts her back on the shelf again like the elf on the shelf like, like <laughs> i don't know do you know what i mean I, i'm just trying to feel like i feel like we could improve this you know i think there's there's a core of a really good story there yeah and that was uh that was tinny cupcake on a uh, creepy pasta Subreddit. From two years ago. So shout out to Tilly Cupcake. <sighs> what did you, what did you, what, what did you, what do you think? I, 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 that was all right, I think. You know, it wasn't good, but it was, it was all right. <laughs> no. It was creepy, you know, it had the creepiness to it. So that was something. It definitely had a creepy vibe. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's my creepy vibe. Do you just turn itself on? <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, I'll just pop it back up. There oh, we go. Oh, my God. Uh, um, that's what makes it creepy. Do you do you want to carry on? Uh, you, do you want to read out one? Yes. Do you Which want to read out? Do you want me to do? Uh, so there's meat or uh, the daddy one. <laughs> I have... So someone found these. So meat is probably actually going to be scary. The daddy one is probably just going to be stupid. I don't know. Okay. Oh my because God. I haven't read these. No, neither have I. So. <sighs> well, this meat is is quite long. It's called. It's called. This is this is called the meat. Are you sitting comfortably? Morning, Mum. I greeted her from the kitchen, seeing her pass by in the living room. Derek. Derek? <laughs> that's, that's Do a, a mum's voice! A... Do a proper mum's voice! Come on. Derek! There you go. She simply gave a weak smile and continued to the TV to take her mind off of things while I cooked breakfast. I was cooking up some meat <gasps> that I needed to get rid of. It was starting to smell anyway. Oh, no. What? You shouldn't cook meat. It's starting to go off. I know. Like, come on. Why, why is this even... Go so, first of all... Oh, it's, it's looking a bit grey. So there's a it smells like fart. There's a weird dichotomy here. Like, first of all, mum's looking sick and has to take her mind off of things. And so Derek's doing the... the Cooking. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that's fair enough. He's looking after his mom. But he's cooking out some meat that he needed to get rid of. For breakfast. I mean, that already, alarm bells are going off. What is it, bacon? Uh, what what meat would you cook that started to smell a bit when you cooked it? I mean, I don't... I mean... I'm not a meat eater anymore, particularly. I mean, I get food poisoning incredibly easily. Right. So... You know, I uh, discretion is the better part of valor. I feel like we have a sense of smell for yeah. only like a couple of things nowadays. And I think eating food that is off is probably one of those things, right? Like apart from smelling a gas leak. Um, yeah. What other like survival things is smell, is smell actually useful for? Uh, smelling cat sick so I don't accidentally tread on it. Okay. That's great. always good. Useful. Useful yeah. things. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway. With the right seasonings, it's a fine meal. You know, just put the chilies in there. Mum's not going to know, is Bit she? Bit of black pepper. Um, the relationship between me and my mother was odd, to say the least. She wasn't abusive, far from it. She became very timid ever since that night when Dad died. Oh. It changed both of us, but we continued on without him. It was about three years ago when it happened. I was 16 and hadn't really developed an identity for myself yet. I was just kind of average, very unassuming. People didn't think much of me. So hang on a second. Yeah. What do you mean he hadn't developed an identity for himself? Well, I mean, if he's at school, you know, there's there's, there's like the jocks, there's like the, the nerds. You have to decide which one you're going to Yeah, yeah, he's like, you know, I'm not really, any, you know, I don't really fit in with the other kids. He hasn't watched... I'm not really part of any of their groups. Is I'm it, just is it, Derek. Is it like that when you watch um, that fucking, that Drive? Have you seen Drive? And people just want to be Ryan, Ryan Reynolds', Reynolds his character from Drive. Is that is that what I'm thinking of? Where you just is assume Ryan that Reynolds? Ryan Gosling. Sorry, Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. That's the one. Right, yeah, because yeah, yeah. people watch Drive and I'm like, I just oh, became I, Ryan Gosling. I'm gonna after get I that, that fucking movie. jacket with a scorpion on, and exactly. I'm gonna be cool. That's the that's the that's the developed identity that I imagine that this guy is now. Don't you have a jacket like that, Lewis? Well, yeah, <laughs> I've got a leather jacket because I have. I watch Drive. <laughs> I'm talking about me. I'm this guy. This guy is. So he's you real know. human being <laughs> and a real hero. So in retrospect, I appreciated that people didn't think much of me. I still tried to keep that part of myself alive. Okay. Um, it was a Friday night like any other. School had let out for summer break. What, is breakfast? No, no, no. It's, it's, this is a flashback to when his dad died. Oh, I see. It was a Friday night like any. I was going to say, it's a late time to have breakfast. School had let out for summer break and I was excited for the weekend. We had dinner and I watched TV on the couch with my dad. I wasn't really distant from my mum. We men just naturally spend time together due to our raunchy <laughs> sense of humour and love of action. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like watching Die Hard. Yeah. yeah. Punching each other, oh. talking about football, a football and sharing a beer. Down Ooh. the old pub. I went to bed that night thinking about how summer was going to go. Pool parties, barbecues every Saturday, all oh, that good stuff. He sounds like a cool kid. I didn't have many friends, hmm, but the ones I had were near and dear to me. And that's all that mattered, really. Oh. I think an hour had passed and I hadn't got to sleep. My mind was just racing with plans. Normally, it's the other way, isn't it? Like, you, you start thinking about something and you just drop off immediately. 
But well, no, guy... no, I mean, it's pretty common to have your mind racing when, it, when you're trying to get some sleep and you just can't close your brain down. It's just, it's whirling away and he's excited. You know, so it's not that weird. That's when I suddenly heard footsteps passing by my door and the soft sound of talking. It was my dad and he seemed to be speaking in a hushed, frantic tone as if something was wrong. <gasps> I quietly got out of bed and walked towards the door, which had been closed. With an ear against it, I could hear him much clearer than before. Just bring it here, all right? Fuck. We don't need this shit here. I'll be in the garage. Don't attract any attention. Ooh. My dad didn't work a job that relied on him being up at such a late hour. So this didn't sit right with me. It made my stomach churn hearing the cold tone in his voice. Conflicted with worry about us. I'm certain it was us he was talking about in the end. I kept listening for his movements. And once he'd made his way down the hall and out of earshot, I quietly creaked open the door to confirm that he was out of sight. If I got caught, I'd just pretend he was, I was getting water or something. Oh, no. I must have stood there for what felt like five minutes before I thought it was safe to follow. Once I got to the kitchen and stood by the door leading to the garage, I could hear my dad talking to someone I recognised. Placing my bets, I slowly and gently turned the knob to creak open the door just to peek and see what could possibly be happening. Ooh. Placing his bets. What is he? What do you mean? Is he playing poker on his phone? What's going on? Why I mean, is he I, placing a bet? He doesn't mean literally, Lewis. Why, what do you mean? I don't understand. He's having a peek through the garage door. The smell was unbearable. Oh. The sight of it was burned into my memory. A red puddle pooled underneath a table that my dad had set up in the centre of the empty garage and resting on it, was a naked human body whose limbs and head had been chopped off. Oh, Jesus Christ. I backed away from the crack in the door and leaned against the wall inside, catching my breath. I was dizzy enough to pass out. Oh, fuck. Got any idea how you'll cover this one up? The other voice said. It sounded like a close friend to the family who met my dad at work. Wilson Marks. Not Mark Wilson. Wilson Marks. Okay, sure. <laughs> Don't sass me, asshole. My well, dad I'm... snapped at him. Oh, oh that's the character. Sorry, I could I hear him you. chopping into the torso of the victim. Oh, Jesus. I didn't think their daughter was such a light sleeper, Wilson retorted. In any case, the clean-up crew will be here in half an hour, my dad continued. I wish the club would get the balls to set up a place for this so we don't have to. All part of the process, man, Wilson said simply. There was a moment of silence between the two and eventually my dad abruptly stopped chopping. <gasps> Wilson snapped a finger to get his attention. And then I'm pretty sure he pointed towards the door because it suddenly jolted open to find me sitting on the floor in silence. Oh. Derek, my dad started. Mother isn't here, is she? <gasps> what did you do to that man? I asked him, looking up at him, my ears, my eyes te tearing up. Tearing up. <laughs> Your my ears tearing <laughs> off. <laughs> my ears flying off. <sighs> Shit, my dad hissed out in frustration, leaning against the doorway with his look of regret. Wilson stood behind him, watching his friend's spirit be crushed by this realisation. Just go to your room and don't. Sirens wailed in the distance. <gasps> my dad looked around, assessing the situation. He and his friend were bloodied with a dead body in our garage. As multiple police cars woke up the neighbourhood, an officer surrounded the house. He had no options left. How did the police know to go there? His secret was out, at least part of it. The truth would go with him as he used the meat cleaver in his hand to slit his own neck. Oh my God. Unlike him, Wilson went down fighting. He tried taking on the multiple officers, rushing into the garage and was ultimately taken into custody. Wow. Our family was shaken by this event. The neighbours knew that my mother and I were perfectly harmless up to this point and always wondered about him. Since apparently he did leave the house at unusual hours, they just weren't aware that those outings were unusual for a nine-to-five job. This was how the official report went. My father, Robert Carroll, and his partner, Wilson Marks, were two serial killers who kidnapped several people within the past month. Oh. The number kept going up as this information reached further parts of the city. But the lack of any bodies meant the connection was mostly speculation. Wilson only admitted to a few kidnappings that he committed with my dad. Based on this final victim, it could be assumed that they were disposed of. But the exact reasoning of those kidnappings were unknown, since he wasn't willing to answer. There's one crucial piece of evidence that police didn't have, however, 
and I'm certain it was what Wilson wanted to take to the grave, a club was involved. <gasps> Not like a weapon club. Or like a chocolate bar. No. If you love a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club. I never told the police this since I was too speechless to give any useful information that night. And once I regained my senses, I didn't think anything of it. My dad was dead. And I wasn't about to give Wilson Marks any slack when he just stood by and let it happen. I just let him go to death row like he seemed to deserve. But as I went through some old belongings of my father, I managed to find an old safe. He kept some personal belongings inside. I found out inside what he was part of behind his family's back. So how did he get into the safe? Did he have the combination? Mm. Hmm. Maybe he just put like in like his own birthday and that was like <laughs> the combination. Yeah, and like one 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 one. Do you have well you have to say it musically? One 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 <laughs> one 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 one. It's a and musical they open. lock. Yeah. Uh I'm not at liberty to say the name to strangers, but I found my way around that eventually. What? Hmm? I'll get to how in a moment. The club was, in essence. A chocolate bar. No. no. A private organisation for cannibals. <gasps> which should explain why they preferred their privacy. Well, they would, wouldn't they? They select people of considerably lower class in society. People who you wouldn't notice were missing in a big city. What I saw my father doing was just preparing another meal. Oh, just chop, chop, chop. You'd think that was bad enough, but they weren't cooking it for themselves. This club was connected to a few store brand meat products. Oh, God. So if you've ever found yourself peeking up, picking up the cheaper pork at the grocery <gasps> store. Pork! You probably tasted human flesh before and don't even realise it. Oh, my God. My dad once boasted about having connections to a local butcher who gave him discount pork, which we always had during summer barbecues. <gasps> so I know that we've all been exposed to it for years. Joining the club to learn all of this was simple enough, and I was prepared to stomach whatever morbid task there was. When I collected the dots and realised that part about my dad's butcher, it wasn't really hard to stomach the taste of human flesh. Why? But why? Why? Why does he have to eat meat? The flesh? Why Why has he become a cannibal? I mean, maybe he's gone a bit mad, you know? Mm. After having, you know, see his dad... Like butcher a body, maybe he's just gone insane. I mean, yeah, I've learned a lot about how they operate, what their goals are, and how they've rid themselves of most any moral fiber that could get in their way. Is there a lot of fiber in um in me? Uh, no, no, there yeah. isn't. Uh, it's helped me cope with the fact that my dad was a cannibal. Eventually, I even started to take part in their killing sprees or harvests as they prefer oh, to call it. that's nice. I grew so numb to the idea, but by the time I went back to school, I was practically unchanged in the eyes of my fellow students. But I couldn't share my lunch with them. Oh. Not yet. <laughs> Pork sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and a club. <laughs> and a club biscuit. Oh my God, it's the perfect uh, fucking packed lunch. Oh, he's got one of those plastic containers you put the banana in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my no. God. Everyone thought I was a perfectly normal person after all these years. That was, except for Mum. Oh. I'm sure she snooped around my room as a worrisome single mother trying to keep her boy on the straight path, making sure my calm demeanour wasn't the result of some sort of drugs I was using to cope with it all. That's probably why she acted so timid now. She must know that if she said anything, she'd lose her son too. So she'll eat the meat I preferred for her this morning, smiling and telling herself that it was just bacon. Oh. And life would carry on like always, just like the club wants. Oh, God. If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club. Oh, well, that's horrible. Absolutely horrible. There you go. That was a little, that was a little story. That was oh, a creepy story. God. The meat. I can't see who wrote it. Uh, it doesn't actually say. Is that what you were searching around for? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's on the Creepy Pasta wiki. I'm sure someone wrote it. And it wasn't that bad, was it? Like, I, I, honestly, like, I, I feel like I knew it was human meat yeah. straight away. Yeah, I mean, it had to be. I mean, I, I knew there was something off about that. And I feel like when you make something that predictable, 
you have to you have to be aware that it is predictable, right? And you have to change it. Yeah. Like, in a sense, like the baby face one we had at the start, when it turned out that they weren't actually a baby doll, I was like, oh, that was... I'm pl- pre- pleasant, pleasantly surprised that I didn't predict the ending. Okay. Is that... Do you, do you agree with me on that? Or is that, like, a thing that you you prefer? I mean, I... There was no, like, real twist, was there? It was, like... Turns out they're cannibals. I mean, we knew that. As soon as there was a guy preparing odd meat, like in the second paragraph, <laughs> yeah. I knew it was going to be human meat. And it felt like at that point it was just going through the motions. Yeah. All right. But there's not there's not really enough like explanation about why the kid just suddenly becomes a cannibal. I mean, if this club actually supported his father properly, he wouldn't have been caught and he wouldn't have lost his dad. So surely he would be like angry about the club and not like join in with them and happily be a cannibal. Would you like to do the last one? Sure. It's called Peppa Pig, Daddy Pig's Revenge. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, it says, is it Tyler Dean 2004? Uh, it's behind this one. Uh, yeah. Peppa Pig. Oh, Daddy Pig's Revenge. <laughs> this is, this is terrible. <laughs> I liked Peppa Pig when I was a little boy. But what I watched scared the frick out of me. <laughs> okay. I wonder, I'm immediately thinking, um, we've just had a story about bacon and meat. And now... Oh, no. Got Peppa Pig again. But I'm sure it's not going to be... I'm sure. Okay, well, go for it. We'll have to see. One time, I was going downtown to find some Peppa Pig DVDs. You know what you do? <laughs> ah. <laughs> but everywhere I would go, I could not find anything. I was about to give up and go back home, but I found one more shop. It was Walmart. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like you. You're like oh, they you, sell everything in Walmart. Do you know what? It's like it's like you've gone down the whole high street and back up, yeah. and then you're like, oh, why don't I try the biggest shop? Oh, like in, I, I'll try one more shop. <laughs> that one, the, and it's the giant Walmart. Go for it. I asked myself. Why is Walmart in the United Kingdom? <laughs> well, it's Asda, I guess. Um, okay, so I—I th- I mean, that's weird, isn't it? You also spelled United wrong. Yeah, I mean, United Kingdom. So I took a look in there. There was a bunch of DVDs of shows like Pocoyo. I don't even know what that is. Pingu. I mean, we all know, we all know we Pingu. All know Pingu. <laughs> Bear in a Big Blue House, Teletubbies, and even Arthur. I've seen almost every episode of those shows, but never seen those episodes on those DVDs. I found a Peppa Pig DVD with two episodes called Daddy Pig Loses the Race, Daddy Pig's Revenge. (laughs) Okay, so let's just speculate what the episode Daddy Pig Loses the Race is about. So what kind of a race? Like Like a Tough Mudder. Because mud <laughs> pigs, right? Like, oh, you're thinking like a like a, one of those horrible tough challenges, like so, sort of like 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 uh, where they have to, it's like an assault course, right? Like yeah. that the Marines would go where they have to run under a netting and like will crawl under a netting and do a rope swing across a sort of dirty mud lake, and then I don't know, fucking you get really you get covered in mud at the end of it, and I feel like that would like be appropriate for. A I was originally thinking it would be some sort of egg and spoon race. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or something... Like <laughs> more a, whimsical. Like a sports, school sports day. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's more appropriate for, like, a cartoon. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. And he, he he loses the race on purpose because oh. uh, he's cause he sees that, you know, he's he doesn't want to beat, you know, Peppa Pig or whatever. Do you know what I mean? He but lets, then why does he want revenge? Daddy Pig's revenge? I don't know. Maybe... It's unrelated to the race. Well, that's true. Okay, so that was my immediate thought. But, okay. But then then I saw that he revenged. Maybe he got sabotaged in the race, in the Egg and Spoon race. Like someone gave him a boiled egg instead of a fucking raw egg. I don't know what the rules are. Okay. Maybe someone was, like, spinning the egg so that the yolk... It was like a gyroscope, and it was. I don't. I don't know. You know, if you like, if you like, spin an egg in your hand, the yolk will like spin around. How does that help you win an egg and spoon race? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, right. Okay. Someone might have been messing with it. <clears throat> I okay. don't be hard to get that across. I mean, wouldn't in a it cartoon. be like they glued the egg to the spoon? That would be the go. obvious. Okay. Yes. The obvious. And then Daddy Pig's gonna get his revenge. Yeah. By taking a shit in their bed. Oh. Or wow. something like that. Right. 
I reckon. That I mean, it a... was whimsical, and now it's it's suddenly got dark. Oh, okay. How? But about... then that's why it's on the Creepy Pasta website. I what? mean, it's on Bad Creepy Pasta dot <laughs> Um, yes, the, the finest I website. I didn't realise until just now it was on Bad Creepy Pasta. Um, Whoops. Well, you were you were just googling these up. It doesn't matter. All right, yeah. carry on. Okay. I was decided to buy the DVD because it was the only Peppa Pig DVD there. I put it in my DVD. So I guess he's home now. I put it in my DVD and played all episodes. The beginning of the first one was normal, except in the background it was night time and there was blood on the title. <laughs> there was blood on the title. <laughs> yeah, and then like the title sequence, it so came up. Daddy Peppa Pig, Pig loses the race was totally fine, was it? The, oh no, no, sorry, it carries on. Yeah, that's just the start of the episode. It's got blood dripping. Oh, in the beginning of the first one, it was normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So it's perfectly okay. normal, Apart except from blood. there was blood on the title. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so not really normal at all then. <laughs> You know, Almost entirely not normal. No, I mean abnormal would be the word it was you'd abnormal, use to describe it. Perfectly abnormal. Yeah. The episode started off with Pepper and her family watching TV. Daddy Pig said that he wanted to a race in something, the Olympics or something. <laughs> I like the use of two somethings in that sentence. Yeah. It's very, very vague. Daddy Pig said that he wanted to a race in something, <laughs> the Olympics. Or something. Yeah. It does sound like a thing a dad might say, though. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, yeah, your mother wants me to, uh, to do a race in something. Olympics or he, something. He, like, cracks open his third beer. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, all right, carry on. The next day, Daddy Pig was in the race with some people also racing. Well, you would hope so. I, I mean, <laughs> otherwise, what kind of a race is it? <laughs> It's just a jog. <laughs> you? That's an entirely different episode. Daddy Pig goes for a job. Jog. A jog. Uh, oh, fucking hell. And then the race started. Daddy Pig was struggling to get first, but then he tripped over and came last lace, and then he lost. Oh, last place. I see. And then he lost. Daddy Pig was so sad, so Pepper and her family had to go home. Daddy Pig and Mummy Pig were in bed. Mummy Pig were asleep, but Daddy Pig was awake with hyper-realistic eyes, and he looked very angry. He said, I have to get revenge on everyone. They have to pay for it. Episode ended. Right. Okay. I mean, that's a perfect setup for the next episode, Daddy like Pig's the, Revenge. I like the sentence, episode ended. Yeah, episode ended. Episode ended. It's just concise. You know, it really just gets the point across of what's happened. Okay, let's see how this next episode starts. I'm sure it's going to go fine. So Daddy's Daddy Pig's Revenge. Okay. The next episode didn't have an intro. It started with Daddy Pig going outside killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the start. Very normal. So it's a cold open. It was normal except... Daddy Pig going outside killing everyone. How do you say, like, in, in, the, in the best writing, you start a story at, like, the last possible moment that you can. So there's no, like, build-up, there's no, like, introduction, it's not strung out. Like, bam, you're straight in the action with something happening, and it's Daddy Pig out there murdering people. Yeah, and then you can fill in the gaps later for people's kind of, yeah, like, have, rationales. Yeah. But, yeah, this is fine. Pepper woke up and saw him kill everyone. <laughs> Then Peppa Pig screamed silently and ran down the cellar. Right. Then Daddy Pig went back home and went into Pe Peppa and George's room. And then Daddy Pig holded the axe in the air. Then George woke up and gasped. And then the screen went black and Daddy Pig chopped him up. George's crying sounded just like his crying from the episode Lunch. <laughs> Do you remember that one? What? Lunch, the episode Lunch. Yeah, of course, Pig, the lunch. classic episode Lunch, just where George George, George cries. He, he loses his lunch or he has the wrong lunch? Someone steals his lunch? Oh, my God. I don't know. They forgot to put the club in his lunch and he, he had like a weird bacon... He had a bacon sandwich. Ah! Ah! I could see why George would be crying if he had yeah. a bacon sandwich for lunch. And even Daddy Pig said, Oh, no, no, George. But it sounded like Grandpa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> right. After that, the screen went back to normal. And Daddy Pig killed Mommy Pig. Right. 
Then he got a grenade and threw at Susie Sheep's house and the school. <laughs> After that, Peppa Pig. Which one? <laughs> Sorry. Both. Both. One and then, it, well, one grenade. He's got one grenade. He threw it at the house. It didn't go off. He forgot to pull the pin out. Pin I think out. So Susie then... Sheep's mother may be a teacher. Right. So maybe she lives at the school. Okay. Or is it like an annex the of the school. The house school is the same. So maybe one grenade would be enough to take out both. Okay. It's a big grenade. Thank you for that. I mean, it's a cartoon. You know, anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Peppa Pig got out of the cellar and called the cops about Daddy Pig. Oh. Mrs. Rabbit tried to get Daddy Pig, but she got chopped up to pieces too. Okay. After that, everyone in Peppa Pig land, including Peppa, tried to stop him. But he had an RPG <laughs> and shot it to everyone, including Pepper. Then Daddy Pig said to the screen with hyper realistic eyes that were bleeding, You humans, I will kill all of you. You made me lose and you made me do this. Your next barnacle head. Whoa. Episode ended. Episode ended. So, I mean, that was, that was not what you expected when you picked up that DVD from Walmart, was it? Oh, God. I is mean, this dad oh, like? He's not normally like this, Lewis. I have to say, Daddy Pig is not normally like this. He's normally a lot more chill. But this is the second story we've had in a row about a dad going on a killing dad killing killing spree. Dad. It's almost as though the people that write these things may have um, <laughs> some sort of like <laughs> underlying issues. Right. Yeah. Okay. I was so scared that I got nightmares about this episodes. I tried telling some of my friends, but nobody believed me except my best friend. I showed him the DVD and he got scared also. But I am beware Daddy Pig is somewhere and I will have to find out who made this. Amazing. An amazing final final sentence. Okay. That does, but I am beware yeah. Daddy Pig is somewhere. Somewhere out there with an RPG. <laughs> I mean... All because he lost a race. I mean... I think it's, I mean, I mean, you could understand that it's been building up in some time. Okay, so this was know? like the straw that the, broke the camel's exactly. back. Exactly, it was just back. like the snapping moment. Yeah. He couldn't, you know, take it anymore and just had to go on. Where did he get this RPG and like, grenade and, and stuff from? <sighs> I was mean, he like a prepper? <laughs> did, he, did he have like all the, like a stockpile of like weapons and, and canned goods? Daddy Pig planned for the upcoming apocalypse. He had filled tens of jars with pickles and canned food. And his own piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Well, just... This is... Well, look. That was fucking terrifying. I am real fucking spooked now. That was everything that we hoped for from a, from a Halloween spooktacular. I am spooked. Oh, God. I hope you guys are spooked too. We're going to go now. And that'll be the end. There is a possibility that we might bring back some new podcasts with this kind of thing. Because you've been talking to Tom, haven't you, Simon, about doing some sort of a horror -y, spooky podcast. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to start it uh, about six months ago. Yeah, so <laughs> check that out in the past. Um, oh. No. Sure. Well, it, might, well, it might still be a thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. If you guys have got any good um, creepypastas and things you want to send us, good stories, we'll get a suggestions thread up somewhere. And... Um, yeah, thank you for for listening to the the podcast over these of these years. It's um, I do like doing stuff with 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 um, I, I do like recording these podcasts with you, Simon. Oh, thank I, you. I hope you. Yes, it's been an absolute pleasure. Well, there you go. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go. Take care, everyone. Much love. Bye bye. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>